and here we go hello and welcome back to ITP see what I did there IT performance ITP no yes no it's Dave D from ITP that's who it is in this video I'll be going through how I migrated one of my small clients with 10 email mailboxes on exchange across to office 365 using code 2's office 365 migration tool uh, they are currently on small business server 2011 with standard user mailboxes uh, and none of them are using pop or imap uh, but imap is supported pop is neither here or there um, code 2 do reduce pricing for uh, charitable organizations and one year support is included for free for all license types uh, so here's a bit of upfront tech stuff you may need to know shared mailboxes can be migrated uh, and they will require their own license individual license uh, some other mailbox types are not supported and check with code 2 if you're wanting to migrate non-standard user mailboxes when migrating from exchange server the program can be installed in either directly on the server machine or any workstation in the same office that has access to the source server environment um, installing directly on the source exchange server machine is recommended where possible and again you can check with code 2 for these sorts of details make sure your exchanges is up to date and there's many patches mm. oh, excuse me and has as many patches and service packs etc installed as possible and if you intend to migrate data from exchange 2003 2007 or 2010 without service pack mount one you'll need to use the mappy protocol instead of the um, web-based protocol so all 32 bit and 64 bit systems starting from windows 7 and newer are supported for the clients uh, you can either even if you want to migrate from office 365 back to a on-premise exchange for whatever reason maybe you're sick of Microsoft <laughs> and then you're going back to exchange with Microsoft <sighs> okay main licensing points one key with multiple licenses can be used across different sites and different servers the code 2 servers keep track of which mailboxes have been licensed uh, so you cannot use the same license on more than one mailbox but you can use the license on that mailbox as many times as you like blah, 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 blah. each server set of public folders uses 25 licenses regardless of how many actual public folders you want to migrate so that's a big one if you want to, if you're a small company and you use public folders then it's going to be pricey migration types there are three migration types cutover staged or hybrid so the cutover is when everything gets copied across all in one go and on the Monday when Monday morning rolls around everybody's using office 365 the staged migration is when you migrate say the first months of emails the latest months of emails across the office 365 to get everybody working on that months of emails that first month email and then once that's happened you gradually bring migrate the rest across so people can get working on office 365 and their older emails trickle in and update their mailboxes once that's been done the third is the hybrid hybrid isn't so much as a migration type as a working model so you have mailboxes on both an on-premise server and in the cloud 
and you just migrate the use code to software to migrate the mailboxes that you want up in the cloud and the rest stay on the on-premise server okay on to the job the first thing you need to determine is which mailboxes you're going to migrate if there are more mailboxes on the server that you have licenses for this can be if you have old mailboxes that are just hanging around or you're going to be trimming down during the migration not everybody not everything's going to be migrated across After downloading the software, install it on the machine it will be running on. In this example, I'm running it directly on the small business server. The install process will detect if you have all the required prerequisites installed and will try and install any that are missing. Once installed, run the application and browse the quick tour that appears if you're so inclined. Next, activate your license. On the dashboard, in the help section, go to licensing. Click the activate button, cut and paste your license and then click activate again. If you don't already have a license, from here you can buy one as well. The licensing details will update including the number of free licenses if you've already used this key on another installation. Then click close. In the how to start area, click create a new migration job, choose the server type, in this case exchange server, and give the job a name. Any name. It could be Bob if you like. Then click next. Add a source server by clicking on the down arrow and choosing Add a new source connection. This will take you through to a source server connection wizard. My server has Service Back 1 installed, so we will be using EWS. At first, I tried the Auto Discover Exchange Server option, but this didn't work. And I tried different multiple username options, and I'm not sure why, but if I manually Manually ran it and logged into the Exchange PowerShell interface manually, it would work fine. Using Connect to a specific server did work though. The wizard checked I had all the necessary roles and access installed on the server, asked about and configured the missing requirements where needed. Next, add the users who have mailboxes you want to migrate. I removed the public folders so there were, as there were none, and I did not have enough licenses to do the public folders anyway. In hindsight, it may have been quicker to add all the users and then just remove the accounts that I didn't want to migrate. Click next and then add the target server. Again, click on the down arrow and choose Add New Target Connection. Next, choose if the Office 365 server is a global server or one in Germany. Click Next and add in the tenant admin account information and click Next again. Then click Configure. This will connect to the Office 365 tenant and make sure the user you are using has the required permissions and then it will attempt to assign any that are missing. Once finished, click Finished, then click Next. Now for matching the mailboxes. I have two users that are already in the Office 365 tenant and all the others are new. So under the target user mailbox column, 
for each user choose the required option that you want. When you create the first new Office 365 user, your options will be saved as a template for each other new user that you create. As email is still coming in on the old on-premise Exchange server, while the domain is set up on the Office 365 tenant, it is not the primary domain, and so you'll need to change the default email address here to be that of the domain you're wanting to use and not the tenant domain. In fact, you have to change the default email address away from the tenant domain in order to continue. Choose a global password that will be changed later within the tenant. And once the shields, are, once the shields, once the fields are showing as required, click verify and then OK. Go through the list of users assigning either new accounts or matching to existing. This stage can also be used to assign available Office 365 licenses to users. I did not try the auto match options as I only had one existing account within the Office 365 tenant that I was going to be migrating. Once you're happy with your choices, click save and close the window to continue. Continuing on, I found out later that the scheduler can only be used for the initial migration of mailboxes. This can be used to have the migration process happen outside of normal working hours to lessen the bandwidth impact usage on users while they're at work. The time filter is where you decide what items you want to migrate within a date range. It's relatively self-explanatory, either all items, items older than a certain age, or items younger than a certain age. I did not use the scheduler, so just click next. I chose to migrate all the available mailbox folders because they were there, and I was unsure how the users worked with an Outlook. Big organisations can choose to globally not migrate deleted or junk mail folders, etc., depending on what they choose to do. Uh, next, advanced options. Set the maximum number of mailboxes that can be migrated at the same time. I had this as five. Later, I changed it to two after the initial migration, or well, actually the last part of one of the rescans as the small business server I had was a low-powered virtual machine and I had a few instances where mailboxes erred and I had to rerun the migration to complete it. But that's up to you. I'm not 100% sure if the VM is the reason why, but it's too late now to be certain. Next is the summary. Uh, you can go back and change any of the settings as you wish. But if you're happy, just click finish. Running the job is simple enough. To start the migration, just click on the jobs tab. If you have multiple jobs set up, then make sure you have the correct one ticked on the left hand side. And then just click start. The software will scan the local, local server to find the number of items for migration for each user. And then we'll A, create required new users uh, or not and then B migrate all the items chosen. Information about the migration job shows below. You can click on the different items to get more detailed information as it's going. So three of my mailboxes had errors. Code 2's advice was to rerun the job to see if the errored items finished migrating. Clicking rescan reruns the job and after doing this a few times all the items were successfully migrated. Rescan can be used again and again and it's helpful after the DNS has been changed so that once mail is now going to Office 365 tenant, it can be used to migrate any new items that have appeared on the old server since the time of the initial migration. You can run the rescan as many times as you like,
but it cannot be scheduled. It's a manual process. Well, why me? Well, here we go. Here's the here's the sign off then. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned something. Come back another time. Hopefully we'll get some more some more content up a little bit quicker than this one. It's it's, it's taken a little bit of a while for which I apologize. But we'll get there. Okay, cheers. Okay, bye. Come back soon, soon. Bye. Shared ma mailboxes, shared mailbox migration types. There, there are three main. Um, blah, blah, blah. Main licensing points. A single key with multiple licenses can be used across different sites and on. Di Ooh, excuse me. One key. Uh, the staged cutover. Stage cutover. <laughs> um, but it pink can be done my obviously uh, if there are more lights if there are more mailboxes